how to do Rene's test, what are the interpretation of Rene's test, and what all we can decipher out once the Rene's test is performed. So my voice is traveling him from the external ear into the middle ear, then going into the inner ear. So this pathway is called as conductive pathway. There is one question which has been constantly asked in your vivals. You can get to know three important things, right? S, T, D, mnemonic, side of hearing loss, type of hearing loss and the degree of hearing loss. So just note down these points are very important when you do your practical exams. Hello dear students. One of the very important practical questions that is asked to you is about tuning fork test and how to perform Rini's test. Now Adolf Rini was the first scientist who devised this test for assessment of hearing. And we do this with the help of an instrument. Now this is our most important instrument when it comes to hearing assessment and that is the tuning fork. So how to do Rene's test, what are the interpretation of Rene's test and what all we can decipher out once the Rene's test is performed is what I'm going to discuss. So I have with me a patient and uh, I'm going to perform this particular Rene's test on him. But before that, I have to comfortably seat him in a well lighted room before doing any examination and I have to take a consent. Sir, hi, I'm uh, going to perform a test on you. And that will be for assessing your hearing. Okay. So can I perform that, that test? Yeah, sure. Okay. So now I have obtained a consent of the patient. That's very important. So just note down these points are very important when you do your practical exams. Now, how to do Rini's test? First of all, try to understand in Rini's test, we are having both air conduction and bone conduction testing. Like in Weber's test, we only test for bone conduction. In Rini's, we are testing both the air and bone conduction. Now let's imagine that this particular gentleman is hearing, right? So my voice is traveling him from the external ear into the middle ear, then going into the inner ear. So this pathway is called as conductive pathway. Now if I suppose put this tuning fork behind his ear into the mastoid, then that pathway will create a sound which goes by bone vibration and it will directly stimulate the cochlea. That means bone conductive pathway directly stimulates the cochlea, it bypasses the external and the middle ear. That is called as bone conduction. Now remember, in normal people like me and you, we have got air conduction more than bone conduction. So normally our conductive pathway is more than the bone conduction. So air conduction AC is more than bone conduction BC in normal people. Always remember that. Now, how to do a Rene's test? There are two ways to do Rene's test. Before doing a Rene's test, you should always do the Weber's test. That is the first point. Now, when you start the Rene's test, there are two methods to it. One is called as loudness comparison method and the other is called as threshold comparison method. Now, what are the differences between the two? First, let me demonstrate what is the loudness comparison method. In loudness comparison method, you will strike the tuning fork over the hypothenar eminence or the olecranon process or over the knee. Once you strike it, then this tuning fork will become charged. We call this as charging of the tuning fork because the tuning fork is going to start vibrating. And once the tuning fork vibrates, it vibrates parallel to the acoustic axis. So see if I draw a line imaginary along the prongs, this axis in which it is vibrating is called as an acoustic axis. So now I'm going to charge the tuning fork and first in loudness comparison method, I'm going to keep the tuning fork two centimeters away from the external auditory meatus parallel to the acoustic axis. It should not be this way. If you keep it this way, all the sound energy will go in this direction, right? Because sound is a form of wave. So we're going to keep it parallel to the acoustic axis two centimeters away from the external artery meatus. Now these points are very important. Now I'll introduce this like this. This will cause air conduction to happen. And then I'll also keep it here, which will allow the bone conduction to happen. That is behind the ear over his mastoid. And I'll ask him in which of the following air conduction or bone conduction are you hearing louder? Okay. He will say, if he's a normal person, he will say that my air conduction is sounding more than the bone conduction. So that means he has normal hearing. Okay. 
सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज लाउडनेस कंपेरिजन मेथड सो आप मुझे बताइए कि आपको ज्यादा सुनाई कौन सी चीज पे दे रहा है एक बार मैं कान के आगे रखूंगा एक बार पीछे रखूंगा आप मुझे बताएंगे कि कौन से में आपको ज्यादा तेज सुनाई दे रहा है ओके ठीक है ठीक है कान के पास वाले ज्यादा सुनाई दे रहा है जो मैंने आगे रखा पहले सो दैट मीन्स दैट इज लाउडनेस फॉर एयर कंडक्शन इज मोर देन द बोन कंडक्शन दैट इज सीन इन नॉर्मल पीपल ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज लाउडनेस कंपेरिजन टेस्ट बिकॉज इन मेनी टेक्सट बुक्स यू डोंट फाइंड दिस Now I'll tell you the traditional release, which is called as threshold comparison test. Okay. Now what is threshold comparison test? First, I'll charge the tuning fork, and I'll keep it behind over the mastoid. Now the foot plate of it should be kept. He will hear a sound zing, right? And that will go straight directly stimulating over the cochlea. The moment he stops hearing that sound, see now carefully notice that I'm talking about the sound, not the vibration of this tuning fork. the moment he stops hearing the sound that is produced by bone conduction he will raise a finger he cannot talk because that will hamper the frequency so he can raise a finger and then soon after that i'll place the tuning fork 2 cm away parallel to the acoustic axis in front of the external auditory meatus and ask him whether he can still hear or not if he still hears it that means his air conduction is more than bone conduction if he cannot hear it that means his bone conduction is better than air conduction Make sense? Okay. So, मैं आपके कान के पीछे ये इंस्ट्रूमेंट रखूंगा ये एक साउंड निकालेगा उस साउंड को आप जैसे ही आपके वो साउंड खत्म हो जाए आपको जब सुनना खत्म हो जाए पीछे से वाइब्रेशन नहीं साउंड जब वो जिंग करके साउंड आएगा वो खत्म हो जाए आप एक उंगली उठा दीजिएगा और फिर मैं आपके कान के आगे ये रखूंगा इंस्ट्रूमेंट और आप बताइएगा कि आपको फिर भी सुनाई दे रहा है कि नहीं दे रहा है ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज थ्रे शोल्ड कंपेरिजन ओके दैट इज द वे इन विच वी रीड इन आर टेक्सट बुक्स ओके so charge aapko aage rakh ke sunai diya aage rakh ke sunai diya to that means that his air conduction is more than bone conduction okay if he could not appreciate the sound that is produced by air conduction after he has raised the finger that means his bone conduction is more than air conduction now i'll tell you the interpretation of how renees is done now we have seen on a patient how to do a renees test but what are the particular interpretations of this test is something that i'm going to teach you now so in renees test we understood two aspects that there is air conduction and there is bone conduction in normal people i told you the air conduction is always more than the bone conduction so if there is air conduction more than the bone conduction the person is normal but there is a small catch here this can happen even in one variety of patient who have got sensory neural hearing loss why because obviously we know that in sensory neural hearing loss bone conduction decreases right the stimulation to the cochlea will decrease so in any ways in those patients also the air conduction will be more so air conduction is more than bone conduction in two things either the patient is normal or the patient has sensory neural hearing loss now you will ask me to sir agar if this is sensory neural hearing loss then how will we come to know that that person is normal or is having snhl so you already have webers test in webers test if the person is normal he will have centralized webers that is both the cochlea will be equally uh, getting stimulated if you have got sensory neural hearing loss in webers test you will find that the sound will get lateralized to the better side simple okay now comes the second thing if suppose the person i examined had bone conduction more than air conduction that means once i removed the tuning fork from the mastoid and he said yes and i kept it over in front of the ear he could not hear anything when the fork was kept in front that means his bone conduction is more than the air conduction so in those cases what will happen when the bone conduction is more than the air conduction then there is always a chance that the person has conductive hearing loss for obvious reasons because the conduction of sound is not happening well from the external to the middle to the inner ear this pathway is somewhere diseased or blocked so obviously the bone conduction will be more so in conductive hearing loss there will be bone conduction more than air conduction okay so now you understood what are the reasons for both of them 
Now, if air conduction is more than bone conduction, we say Rene's test is positive. Okay, that is normal. That's it. We say it's positive. If by chance we say that the patient has bone conduction more than air conduction, then that means the Rene's test is negative. Okay, that means there is no Rene's or negative Rene's. Okay. Now, there is one question which has been constantly asked in your vivas. That, ye batao, that what is false negative Rene? What is false negative Rene test? Now, what is this particular modality is what they ask. Okay. Now, first try to remember the cause of it. False negative Rene is seen in patients with unilateral severe sensorineural hearing loss. In patients with unilateral severe sensorineural hearing loss, we have got false negative Rene. Now, the confusing part is that you have said, what you sir? You bola tha ki to Rene positive hai for SNHL or normal people. Now you are telling it's false negative. Now first understand the meaning of false negative. False negative. Matlab galat negative result de hai. Okay. Now how does this happen? In sensory neural hearing loss, you know that the bone conduction is reduced on the effective side and the air conduction is more. Now in these particular cases of false negative Rene, if you put the tuning fork, still their bone conduction will be more than the air conduction. That means it's a false interpretation ki negative are. Okay? So now, what exactly is the cause of false negative Rene? It is unilateral severe sensory neural hearing loss and happens because of why? It happens because of the transcranial vibration of the opposite cochlea which helps the test ear to hear. That means, so suppose you are hearing Bone conduction is happening on both the sides. It's not only that my test side is hearing because of this, because of my apparatus here. Even my other side, that is the left side, is helping me here on the right side. Why? Because of the transcranial vibrations, which are produced on the non-test side, which are stimulating the test side cochlea. Okay? So this is why you get an interpretation falsely negative. And that is why false negative Rene is seen in unilateral severe sensory neural hearing loss because of the transcranial vibrations which are coming from the opposite side cochlea which is helping the diseased side to hear. That is why you get a false negative result. Now, Rene's test can be done with the help of all three tuning forks. So you need to know that all the three tuning forks are required for Rene's test. Not just one, 512 is only required for Weber's. But in Rene's, you need all the three tuning forks, which is 256 hertz, 512 hertz, and 1024 hertz. All three are important. Okay. So, this is why, because according to the tuning fork frequency also, we can decipher out how much hearing loss the person has. If suppose the patient is perceiving a negative Rene at 256 hertz, and these both are positive, we'll call that interpretation as mild hearing loss. If there is negative Rene at 512, then it becomes moderate. And if there is a negative Rene at even 1024, then it becomes severe. Okay, so if you perceive Rene's at different, different frequencies, that means 256 is gone, rest are present. We can say it's mild hearing loss, 512 also is gone. We can say moderate and 1024 means they cannot perceive at any other frequency. That means it's severe. So roughly you can even estimate the hearing of that particular person. Okay, so that's why I say tuning fork is one thing, which is a very important armamentarium tool in for ENT surgeons as well as neurologist. Because we can roughly estimate out the hearing loss also. So you can, you can get to know three important things, right? S, T, D, mnemonic. Side of hearing loss, type of hearing loss, and the degree of hearing loss. Right? And this is how this particular Rene's interpretation is done. Okay? So now we have learnt what is negative Rene, what is positive Rene, and what is false negative Rene. Very important question, which is seen in unilateral severe sensory neural hearing loss, and how these particular frequencies get us the degree of hearing loss on that particular side. So this is all about learning Rene's test.